This is Math 151. We're doing Section 4.1, uh, Related Rates. And so um, what we're going to do is think about as, as one thing changes, how does that affect change in another thing? And there'll be two related things. So let's say like we have a, a balloon, basically a, a sphere. And this balloon is inflating. And uh, the two things I want to talk about are the, the radius of the balloon, right? Like from the center to the edge on the sphere, and then also the volume of the balloon. And what my question is going to be, I'm going to tell you the volume's changing at a certain rate, and then I'm going to ask you how fast is the radius changing kind of at a certain point. So the question we're going to dig into is a spherical balloon, just a sphere, it's being filled with air at a rate of two centimeters cubes per second. So notice that's how the volume is changing. How fast is the radius changing? How fast you know, is, it, is it growing um, when, our, when the radius is three centimeters? So let's, uh, let's keep track of a couple things we know. So one thing is uh, volume, volume of a sphere. Either I know it or maybe I look it up, but it's four thirds uh, pi r cubed, and that's in, in cubic centimeters uh, in this case. So now let's think about the pieces. Right now we're going to define some variables. So we know uh, V is the volume, R is the radius, and I know that at a certain point, I, I, I'm going to deal with R being three. I'm going to write that down so I know it. I'm not going to use this information until like I really need it, until the very end. Um, on these types of problems, people are tempted to plug these in early, these values. Um, you don't. Um, so what else do we know? You know, we know that the volume is changing. So the change of the volume uh, with respect to time, right? That, that's how fast the volume is changing. And uh, they tell us that it's being filled at a rate at two centimeters cubed per second. And the other thing that's changing is uh, that we care about is the radius. So I'm just kind of taking stock of everything right now. So I have the equation for volume and I have all of these things. Some of them I, I know some values for. Some of them I'm going to investigate at a certain value is what I should say. So uh, let's deal with this. What we want to know, the question is how fast is that we want to find how fast the radius is changing when the radius is uh, three centimeters, given that the volume is changing at this rate. So this change in volume is constant. It's It's like, a constant change, right? That's how fast it's being filled with air. This change in the radius is probably changing. Uh, if you can visualize it, this is as as uh, the balloon gets bigger and bigger, I think that that might be slowing down that change in radius. And well, we'll find out. All right, so we don't have these. So what I'm gonna do right now is, uh, I there's my relationship for the volume, but I wanna know my relationship in the change of the volume. So I'm gonna take the derivative of both sides right now relative to time. So I'm going to uh, take the derivative of this side and take the derivative of this side. Now notice, and this is important, I haven't plugged in these values yet because this is, an, uh, this is a certain instance. The radius is not always three. The volume, uh, the, anyways, we'll, we'll come back to this. I didn't have a variable for this yet, I'll deal with it. But like numbers like this, you wanna hold off, don't plug them until later. So let's take this derivative. Well, this would just be this left-hand side. Well, that's just a change in velocity, uh, sorry, not velocity. That's just change in volume relative to time. And if I take this one over here, four thirds and uh, pi are constants. If I take, uh, and notice now I'm gonna go of r cubed. So that is, think chain rule. I gotta take the derivative of that. So 3r squared, and then I take the derivative of the r. And if I clean this up a little bit, so that 3 is going to cancel there. So let's see what I have. All right, so now that I've taken the derivative, notice now I have a relationship between r, the change in r relative to t, and the change in the volume relative to t. So now I'm going to plug in those values. So I know the change in the volume is 2. Uh, the question is when the radius is three, and this change in the radius is what we're trying to find. 
So um, I'm just going to divide both sides by 4 pi times 3 squared. So 2 over 4 pi. I'll just square that right now. That's a 9. Goes into there. So that leaves me 1 over 18 pi. So that's it right there. That's the change in the radius respect to the time at that instant when the radius is 3. So I would say uh, 1 over 18 pi, and that's going to be in centimeters per second. Notice what we did. Uh, we assigned symbols for our variables, right? We determined everything that we knew uh, or had to deal with from this. Um, what was given? What are we trying to find? Then we wrote an equation, and then we differentiated it. Then we substituted in the known values. That substitution, again, is the last thing that we do. If we do it too early, um, we're making assumptions that those are always constants through the problem. All right, wordy, let's parse this thing out. Um, an airplane is flying overhead at a constant elevation of 4,000 feet. So that's how high it is. Uh, a man is viewing it from a position 3,000 feet from the base of a tower. So there's some tower and there's some person watching the plane. And let's see, that person is 3,000 feet uh, from the tower. The plane is flying horizontally away from the man. There's my plane. Uh, at a rate of 600 feet per second. Um, at what rate is the distance between the man and the plane changing when the plane passes directly above the tower? Oh, okay, so it, it's at a height of 4,000 feet. And we want to know, like, the, the plane is going this direction. And we're going to assume the man, like, we're going to assume that his vision, like, he, we're going to assume he's tiny. So his vision is, like, at the ground, let's say. So he's looking up at the plane. And so we have this, I'll call this uh, D, maybe I'll call it P, P, the distance between the man and the plane. And now that value is changing, right? Like as the plane goes this direction, it gets longer. And so the plane is also moving. So there's also this value right here. I'm going to say this is directly below the chain plane. This is the distance from the plane to directly below the ground. And we want to know when that thing hits 3,000, how fast is this distance changing? Let's keep track of some stuff. So P is the distance uh, man to plane. Let's call X the, the horizontal distance to the plane. Uh, we know that that change in X is how fast the, move, the plane is moving. So the change in X relative to time is 600 feet per second. Uh, and we want to find the change in the distance between the man and the plane. Uh, we want to find its that, that speed. And I think that's all we got. So as I think about this, there's a couple things changing. X is changing here. Uh, P is changing. So that means uh, I have some change in X. I have some change in P. Um, this height, 4,000, is always 4,000. So as I look at this, I see a right triangle. I see a bunch of right triangles. See how this is x, this is 4,000, and this is this is p. And so no matter how big x, and, and we want to know when x equals 3,000, this height is 4,000, that distance is p. We want to know how fast p is changing, how far fast that length is changing, the distance between the man and the plane. So. Right now, it might be tempting to go 3,000 plus 4,000 equals p squared. Um, that's not going to get us there just quite yet um, because we have this x that is changing. So let's write a Pythagorean theorem like this. Uh, x squared plus 4,000 squared equals p squared. This would be a case where if you plug in that 3,000 too early, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. You're not going to get the right answer. Uh, I don't know how much that actually hurts. But So now I have this set up. And so I'm going to uh, differentiate both sides relative to time. All right, so um, if I take the derivative of x squared, that's 
2x, and then I still have the change in x relative to the change of t. Think about chain rule. Um, and derivative of a constant is uh, just by itself is, is zero. So that's the change in 4,000 is zero. That never changes the height. It's a constant height. Uh, derivative here, 2p, and then the derivative of p, uh, change of p relative to t. Cool. So I have that. This is how the the change in x relates to the change in p, and it depends on the x value and the p value both. Now I can change. Now I can plug in those values. So I want to know when x is three thousand, right? When it actually like gets this distance. So I'm going to plug in a couple things that I know. I know that x is going to be three thousand. I know that when x is three thousand. I could use Pythagorean theorem to show that P is 5,000, 3, 4, 5 triangle. And the other thing I know, I know that X is changing at a constant rate. The plane speed is 600 uh, feet per second. So I'm going to plug those values in. So 2 times X multiplied by change in X relative to T is uh, 600 equals 2 times P, P is 5,000, change in P relative to T. Cool. So uh, divide. I want, I'm solving for this. This is what I'm trying to solve. So I'm going to divide both sides by this. And you might multiply it out. I, I don't like to multiply stuff out till the end unless I have to. Let's see. That cancels. Uh, the thousands part cancels. Uh, five goes into 600 12 times, 120 times. Three times 120 is 360. So that is my change in the distance between the man and the plane relative to time. So it is a 360, it's in feet per second. There it is. Again, don't plug in too early. If you plug the 3,000 in before you differentiate, or plug in the 5,000 before you differentiate, you're, you're saying that X never changes in this situation, but it does. We can plug in the 4,000 because it never changes, right? But we have to take into account everything that's changing in this before we differentiate because we're finding the change. So a uh, rocket uh, is, there's my rocket right there. I don't know what that might be a candle. Um, my rocket, there we go, is launched and it's just going straight up. Here's the launch pad and 5,000 feet away, oh, 50,000 feet away. Let's make that 5,000. That, that does say 5,000. Uh, 5,000 feet away from the launch pad, there's this camera that's just looking at the, uh, looking at as, as, it, as it rises, right? So you can tell that this angle right in here is gonna get steeper and steeper and steeper as, as, the, as it goes up. And uh, it has a certain height. Uh, when the rocket is a thousand feet above the launch pad, its velocity is 600 feet per second. Find the necessary rate of change of the camera angle as a function of time, so it stays fixed on the rocket. So we want to know how fast this is changing. We want to we'll do the function for it, and then we'll find it for uh, this instance as well for the 1,000 feet. So we have a couple of things going on. Let's think about our equation first. We could talk about how this angle theta is related to h and 5,000, you know, if this is a right triangle. Think about this, the 5,000 is a constant, the h is changing, the theta is changing. And this would be opposite over adjacent, which is, which is tangent. Tangent of the angle is the height over 5,000. And we can use the 5,000 because it never changes. It is an absolute constant in the, in the problem. So we got the height of h. Uh, we've got theta, which is the camera angle. We know something about how the height is changing, at least at a certain point. Um, we know, we don't know, but we want to know the change in the angle at that instant. So change in height. All right, so here's our, uh, our relationship between our variables. 
we're going to differentiate then to get these rates to change. So I'm going to take these both relative to time. And we know that tangent is secant squared. So think about chain rule this again. If you take the derivative of this relative to time, it's going to be uh, secant squared of theta and then change of theta relative to time. And I'm going to think about this uh, h over 5,000. The derivative of h is, is just 1, right? If I just take it relative to time. So it's 1 over 5,000 and then change in h relative to, to change in time. So now let's think about some values that we know. Um, we already have the 5,000 in there. When the rocket, so we want to do this instance when the height is 1,000. So we want to know when the height is 1,000. Um, how about what is the actual angle when the height is 1,000? So what I can do then is I can do a little, a little sketch. So when the height is 1,000, this is 5,000. And I can use Pythagorean theorem, and that would give me 1,000 root 26. Um, you can work that out, Pythagorean theorem. And so if I think about secant of theta, secant of theta in this case, that's 1 over cosine, right? Like it's the reciprocal of cosine. So cosine of this angle adjacent over hypotenuse, so 5,000 over 1,000 root 26, but um, that just like the thousands divide out. So it's 5 over root 26. So if cosine is 5 over root 26, secant is root 26 over 5. Notice I didn't have to use any inverse trig to get there. I could just use Pythagorean theorem and I could figure out what secant is. So I know that secant squared then of that angle would be this thing squared, right? Root 26 over five, that thing squared. So it's 26 over 25. So let's plug in what we know. We know that this is uh, 26 25ths. Uh, the height is a thousand. We actually don't have an H to plug into, but we also know the velocity of the rocket, how the height is changing. That D theta is what we're looking for. Uh, the velocity is 600 feet per second. So this is a 600. And so I can multiply both sides by uh, 25 26 Do a bit of canceling and such, and I end up with 3 26 radians per second. There's my change in theta relative to time at that instance, right? This is not constant. Like that, that's going to be changing. But when this height is 1,000, that's how fast that camera angle needs to be changing. All right, let's take a little break from context, context for a minute and just, uh, just do a little bit of just like the mechanics of this. So there's some situation, who knows what it is, but really we, we know the equation is this. We want to find the change in x relative to time when x is 2, uh, at x equals 2. And uh, at that, when x is 2, the change in y is negative 1. So we want to find this when these two things are the case for this equation. So everything is, is set up for us. We don't need to draw the picture, uh, assign variables. So here is our relationship between x and y. Let's differentiate both sides. So this is just dy dt. If we take the derivative, uh, the, the change relative to t of this, uh, that's going to be a 4x to the first power and then change of x relative to t. And then that's just a constant, so that's uh, that's a zero. Cool. So now these are how the changes are related to each other, and we want to find uh, this when x is two. So now we can substitute in. So the change in y relative to t is negative one when x is two, and that is what we are finding. So that's an eight. Uh, divide both sides. Negative one divided by eight. And there it is. So in this last situation, a six foot tall person walking away from a 10 foot lamppost. So we have this, this 10 foot lamppost. 
light being generated from there. And we have this uh, six foot tall person walking away <laughs> at a constant rate of three feet per second. Uh, what is the rate that the tip of the shadow moves away from the pole when the person is 10 feet from the pole? Interesting. So the light comes down like this, cast the shadow, and we want to know how fast this is changing when the person is 10 feet away from the pole. So let's not plug in anything that is not changing as a constant. So for example, like the 10 foot away from the pole, we're going to plug that in later, not in, not in now. Let's just call this X. So we have a couple things that are changing here. Um, the height of the pole is constant. The height of the person is constant. The distance between the person and the pole is something that, that changes. It's a variable. Person to pole. Uh, the Y. That's the distance between the tip of the shadow, I'll just call it the shadow, and, and the pole. And those things are going to be changing, right? So, so dy relative to time, the person's speed, and dy relative to dt is the shadow, uh, the tip, how fast the tip of the shadow is moving, I'll call it the shadow speed. So there we've got some information. Notice like this setup, I used X and Y for the things that we're measuring that we know are changing. We can keep those constants in there. So now we've got to figure out some sort of equation for this. And I think what I could do is some similar triangles. So if I take uh, this smaller triangle, actually, let's take the big one first. Take that big triangle right there this is 10 and this is y right and there's that angle and then i could take a smaller version of the triangle too like like the uh, instead of from the the height of the lamppost the height of the the person those two triangles are similar to each other this is six notice how like this angle and this angle like here's a right angle this angle and this angle. Here's a right angle, this angle and this angle. Like it, all the angles are the same, so they're similar triangles. So I have the height of six, but if I think about this distance that's right here, just from here to here, that's the whole distance minus the x. So that's y minus x. So now I have these similar triangles. So now I could set up a, a ratio, right? I could say 10 is to y as 6 is to y minus x and you can set your ratio up uh you know a little differently as well but you're gonna you're gonna get there either way uh, multiply both sides by y so that this side becomes 6y multiply both sides by y minus x so this side becomes 10 times y minus x and there's my there's my equation there's my relationship between them both so I may, I'll rewrite this as, as 10y minus 10x equals 6y. I could go even further. How about I subtract, how about I, yeah, I could subtract 10y from both sides. So negative 10x equals negative 4y. And I could clean that up as well. Multiply both sides by negative, And I could say a 4y equals 10x. So now I have my relationship. Here's my equation right here. And notice I didn't plug in the um, 10 feet away from the pole, that distance right there. Like I, didn't, I don't need to plug those in yet um, until I take the derivative. So now I'm gonna differentiate relative to time. So this is going to be a four and then dy relative to dt. And this will be 10 dx relative to dt. Whoops. And I'm going to just erase a little bit up here just to give myself a little bit of room so you can, you can see it better. So let's go ahead and use what we know. Now we can plug in some of the things. Uh, the person's traveling at 3 feet per second. And that is, remember this x, this is the distance between the pole and the person. 
So that change in x relative to time is 3 feet uh, per second. So let's plug that in here. So we've got uh, divide by 4. So that person was traveling at 3 feet per second. Their shadow is traveling uh, faster at 15 halves feet per second. So about 7, not about, but exactly 7.5. All right, so as you're doing these, take your time to set up the problem, set up the relationships, and as you're setting up your initial um, formulas, equations, make sure that you're not plugging in uh, the things that um, aren't constants in the problem. Uh, for example, when the person is 10 feet away, the person is not always 10 feet away from the pole, the person is moving. So this X, if we substitute in 10 for X, we're actually gonna end up with like a zero answer. So that's kind of the art to these problems is knowing when to plug in those values and it's after you differentiate give those problems a try let me know what questions you have message me or post them on the uh, on the forum